就是洪熙官。至<笑>善门下，我早就料到只有你还会来找我，你有勇气。<咳>在你没有跟我交手之前，照本派的规矩，先要闯过两一剑。Welcome, welcome, everybody, back to Tully Television. And today we got, oh, look at who we got over here. We got a Smoky Bishop, and this is definitely not practice. This is definitely this is not practice. Yeah, this, this is, is the, this is the real Dizzle, the real Dizzle, Holy Fizzle. I'm on and, my on the, I'm on my on the run tour. <laughs> yeah, you're on the run from everybody I owe money to. Oh shit, man! Oh shit! I better not be. I better not let Big Tony know I seen you. Yeah, don't let Tony know. No, no, I'll, okay. I'll let Tony know. You don't need to get involved. <laughs> I'll. Tony don't need to hear from you about the sandwich I owe him. All right, the bread sandwich. I think Not I bread. Can hear <laughs> but uh, today we're going to be talking uh, some choices that we have for. Misused or underused heroes in certain uh, franchises that came up. It doesn't necessarily need to be MCU stuff or necessarily Fox stuff. It could just be whatever has come out in the last however many years that we felt like we that could be a little bit better. And uh, you know, obviously, we're not gonna. I, I'm not gonna try to dig too much into CGI shit because, like, certain time periods didn't really have the technique for certain things. Uh, but even then, still, you could tell a good story with kind of bad CGI. It just needs to be a really good story in order yeah, to bypass that. That's the whole point. Is I'm not. I don't care about CGI either. You could have a guy in a rubber mask, but if you don't look like the character or act like the character, right, right, like you out of it, like the perfect example I'd have to say for me is how the Rock look in the Mummy movies, like that first Mummy movie when they were giving him the background. I, I don't even know why they did that. It like, looked because... horrible, but the story was decent enough for me to kind of forget about how shoddy the Rock looked on that. Um, I mean, they, were making, they were making Final Fantasy fucking villains look more realistic at that point. Right. I mean, a lot of people joke about PlayStation 2 cutscenes, but there's a reason why they refer to them back then because they were pretty fucking tight. Like, they yeah. were pretty good for considering video game stuff, you know? And I, yeah, I mean, CGI can, it helps. But 
you know, the story really helps the most out of everything. You just use CGI without using it properly and then be like, oh, wait, check this out. Right. Because everyone, everyone that saw that fucking whatever the fuck it was, fake ass Wayne John- Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have been like, listen, this is not going in the movie. Right, I, I don't, don't care what the fuck we gotta do. We gotta Harry House in this shit or something, <laughs> but we're not fucking going into the movie yeah. with this thing. I need a miniature model master to come in and work extra yeah. hours to recreate this whole thing. And I don't care how much it costs, we're not yeah throwing this up. Just on get the way back on the set. Get the way back on the set. We'll put him in a fucking giant rubber fucking scorpion ass. His ass will be a scorpion, <laughs> right? <laughs> Pay him I mean, enough money to fucking humiliate himself, and let's go. I mean, shit. I I I can even. Oh, I curse. I better watch my cursing on the YouTube's there. Oh, um, I gotta watch my mouth too. I no. Let me watch your mouth for you. Okay. Oh wait, that's an innuendo. Hold on. <laughs> uh, like for instance, uh, Clash of the Titans. That Clash of the Titans back in the day. Yeah. That dude who was like um, the horned figure, you know, yeah. like that lived in the swamp. Still to that day, still to this day, I find that to be fucking scary looking, bro. You know what I mean? Like they did so good, and that was just practical makeup, basically. That wasn't really like him when they like when he was talking and stuff. That was him just in a big hairy suit, basic. I mean, fur all over him. And that was so practical and so simple that it still stuck with me to this day as occasionally getting visions of the, of him in my mind and get scared and stuff like, oh, he was scary. I'm still scared of him. <laughs> yeah, and then, no, like, even well, even the stop motion was good in that movie. Like, it was. It was. I, I, lo- I like the whole Medusa scene is like what I always remember from my childhood. Like, yeah, watching that movie. Was good. Yeah, that was good, and the way they did that little golden owl, I thought was yeah. great too. Like, so you can have, you know, okay um, technology on the screen or whatever you want to call it, effects on the screen. But uh, what really carried that movie was the story, the acting. It was innovative and stuff, but it was just so much more than what they were doing effects wise for that movie. And, you know, it really does matter. And I think that's kind of leads us into some of these uh, characters that we've gotten to know in these superhero movies where it's like, Oh man, that's such a disappointment. Like it was just horrible Mm -hmm. around. You just, you hear that this part, like they're putting that person in this movie. And if you're a fan or if you're not, you're just like, oh shit! I want to see that. Exactly. And then fucking, you look at it and you're like, either a that's not the character. <laughs> you totally just change the person, right? Or or it just looks like complete shit. Or yeah. you're not, or you don't you didn't even know what to do with this character. You gave them nothing in this movie. You just threw them in there because you were out of. Right, out of characters or thought that just by putting a big time actor in there, a big time character name in there. Um, I think a perfect example of that, for instance, um, was Ryan Reynolds in that Wolverine Origins movie. I mean, you had a big time actor. I love Ryan Reynolds. Uh, Big time character, you know, both popular and... I mean, you can't get no better chocolate and peanut butter combo than that. You know what I mean? Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. He's basically Deadpool in real life, you know, in a certain way. He and agreed to he agreed to do the movie because he wanted to be the only person considered to be Deadpool. And once he found out in the movie what they did to his character, he still stuck it out because he knew that if he didn't appear in this fucking garbage can of a fucking movie, he would never get another chance to be Deadpool. Right. And I, right. He said, I'll fucking take the paycheck. We'll do this shit. But then this will put me on the fucking 
trajectory to actually do Deadpool the right way. And it, and it did. It did actually lead him into being able to get some scenes together, I think, on his own dime. And I think people forget that that trailer that initially showed that screener or whatever, that was on his dime. You know what I mean? Where he's yeah, he sitting, paid for that whole thing. Yeah, where he's sitting on the bridge drawing the, the picture or whatever and does all that stuff. So that's, that's how much it shows that if someone has... Uh, a care for that character and the willingness to go that extra mile for that character can come out great and I think I mean look at it now it led to a sequel it's leading to a Christmas special a third a second or third sequel depending if you want to add the Christmas special in there and now he finally got Hugh Jackman back for the MCU and if he didn't do so good in that initial part nearly, what, 15 years ago or so? Yeah. All that chain of events probably wouldn't have happened. You know, he probably well, would he have did. never, never if been. If he would have said, fuck this, I'm not doing this movie, you destroyed this character. And, just and they did. The and they did. somebody else took that role or if he, you know, if they just decided not to use him, down the road, when they decide to make Deadpool, they weren't. They probably were not going to use Ryan Reynolds again because they would have had a bit of like a big write-in campaign for him. That probably would have been the only way because they were like they would have been like, I mean, like, hey, that's like me, uh, being, uh, hey, listen, we're gonna have you be Michael Corleone in this little prequel, and the shit bombs. They're like, yeah. Uh, we obviously oh, made a mistake. You mean like the, you mean like the Han Solo movie? <laughs> right, right, right. They did that already with Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. That was like, what are you doing, man? Like, uh, can't you can't we can't put Harrison's face on there? How he looked like thirty years yeah. ago or something? Come on, you're making dead people walk around <laughs> in movies. General Tarkin is dead. <laughs> Bro, they made a fucking James Dean movie <coughs> 60 years after he died. All right. So come on. Come on. Come on, man. But uh speaking I'm... of uh real quick, you uh saw he's the new Thunderbolt Ross, right? Yes, yes, Harrison Ford is Thunderbolt Ross, and I think that that's a good uh a good pick, man. I'm just worried about this <laughs> like not saying I wouldn't have wanted Harrison Ford. That's a big time name. No yeah. doubt about it. But my concern is time waits for no man. And he's like 76 as yeah, it is. William Hurt. William Hurt was like in his mid 70s, but he before he passed away. True, true. And yes, Thunderbolt Ross is, I guess, an old man yeah. uh, in the books. So you can't necessarily I mean, yeah, have... I think you got to think about him this time now. Banner's in his 50s. And he was dating Banner's daughter. So he had to have been like his mid to late 70s. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because if you're thinking back 2008, yeah, mid 50s, late 50s. Because Betty was, what, 30-ish around that time? Yeah, so the timing makes sense. The timing makes sense. You can't really have Harry Styles come in and be general... General Thunderbolt Ross. Hey guys, I'm. You can't. You can't be like the X. Uh, see, uh, I try not to fucking shit on the X Men. <laughs> I already pre-called that, but you how did... are you gonna have the fucking? How are you gonna have four decades of people that look the same age? You know that is such a horrible thing to where, <sighs> man, when. The first X-Men movie came out. It was so great. It was pretty much everything I was hoping for. I was hoping for more like comic accurate suits, but I got like the real world thing, yeah. you know, like Wolverine's supposed to be an undercover sneaky assassin running around at night in our bright yellow outfit. I, <laughs> I get it. You know what I mean? You want to be covert with certain things. Uh, but yeah, the, the the timelines, the things they did with that movie, 
the total waste of characters that they had was well, just the rest. The last four movies made like no sense as far as like their own canon, like their own, uh, their own, um, like yeah, continuity, I mean, right? Yeah. Because wasn't you're, like, making, you're making these four movies with the same actors and characters, but you're not, age. but you're not making it. You're making four separate movies. You're not making a fucking franchise. So right. it looks like you're making four separate movies. You're not like, you know, part one, two, three, and four should be like continuing a storyline. It's Whereas, not like, like Back the to the Future. Yeah. Back to the Future happened all in a week, if you really yeah. think about it, or something to that degree, or a week and a half. Even though those movies came out years apart, the whole story takes place. And, the yeah, like yeah, a, the, main, the main timeline, yeah, right. The main timeline to where you didn't have to really worry about, uh, all right, in the second movie, uh, it's 1985, but in the third movie, it's 2005, and they still look the same. It'd be like, no, 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 Marty would be kind of older, maybe a little bit more bigger in the belly because he's 30 to 40 years older. You know, like, he's not going to be that skateboarding high schooler that he was hanging off of cars and, ooh, look at me. You know, it just didn't make sense. You want me to believe that Michael Fassbender and um, James McAvoy, that that last movie is only, what, five or ten years from... Then that initial X Men movie that came out, yeah, that, it's about ten years. There's no way. Then what type of hard living was was Magneto doing from that point <laughs> to then? Because that was some hard living. Then <laughs> put it that way, you know. Yeah, look, fucking, yeah, fucking blood poisoning from the fucking magnetism. He had too much <laughs> lead in his blood. Right. Oh, oh my god. Uh, speaking of Magneto real quick, they did a thing on him. Uh, uh, he's dead supposedly in the comic books again, uh, permanently, but when, uh, he had his heart taken out or his heart was pierced or something and he used the iron in his blood to keep pumping his heart to stay alive. And so then he was able to fight off whatever the enemy was and then die. And I thought that was pretty innovative. Like he basically can keep himself alive, basically, if you want to keep just By doing that. Iron in his blood to keep pumping. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that that was pretty innovative to 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 use. Like basically, if he didn't do that, he would have been gone. But um, yeah, that was some hard living. Some hard living in those ten years for good old Fastbender there, uh, to make him look like uh, Sir Ian McKellen. Yeah, I don't know. And then you got like Apocalypse where you have characters like Psylocke, which is pretty this could have been pretty good with that character. That character could have I think this movie was like the basis of why that movie alone was the basis of why I wanted to do this this subject. Apocalypse? Yeah, Apocalypse. Yeah. Because you have you got Psylocke, Archangel. Not even just Angel. They turned him into Archangel. Right. Storm. Fucking Storm. And fucking Magneto as your four horsemen. That movie should have been insane. Like, yes. that for, those four alone are definitely worth horseman status. And it's so, I mean, it's, she just winds up running off at the end. She's like, yeah. She's like, all right, I look like the, I, I, I wore the suit. The suit looked like uh, the comic. I'm out. Mm. And, and that was Olivia there, Munn, uh, right? Yeah. Is that the one that's go- causing all this trouble lately with the Harry Styles? and? No, that's uh, Olivia Wilde. Oh, Olivia Wilde. Uh, yeah. So I apologize to you, Olivia Munn. I was about to go off. Nah, fuck her, too. She fucking... <laughs> She fucked over uh, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I'm I'm not a fucking Packers <laughs> fan, but still. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, fuck her then too. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I like Aaron Rodgers. Okay. He's okay. But, uh, all right. Yeah. So Olivia's must be a problem. I had a problem with an Olivia years ago before I met, met Chrissy. And she was, um, yeah, she was an Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. It's Tony Soprano. I was fucking much of a problem. Olivia's on. <laughs> yeah. I guess every Olivia is. His mother was a fucking. Fucking t- terror to deal with. Did you ever see? And if you haven't, I recommend this The Many Saints of Newark. I've seen bits and pieces of it, and everyone tells me to watch the whole movie. That kid is his real kid. Yeah, that's his real son, right? Yeah. yeah. He, you could tell that that's his kid because his mannerisms. It feels as if he's really not acting, trying to act like his dad. It's as if he's naturally, they, they, he's naturally yeah. his father. It's if they picked James Gandolfini off of the streets from like 40 years ago and just brought him to the present and was like, you're going to be yeah. Tony Soprano, but you're going to play baby Tony Soprano now. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's as if they literally plucked him from the timeline just to do his younger self. It's crazy the way he talks, the way he moves and everything yeah. is just so spot on. It's spooky, man. It's quite crazy. It um, reminds me kind of, too, of uh, the Chucky series. Did you see the yeah. Chucky series? I've seen parts of that, too. I got to. There's some of it I got to catch up on. Did you know that that chick in the wheelchair is the daughter of the guy that plays Chucky? No, I didn't. Really? Yeah, that's his real. That. That's his real daughter, and there's parts in the show that she's acting like Chucky because she's possessed by him, yeah. and and that's scary too. The way yeah, she, she looks, like her dad. yeah, the, the way she looks at yeah and stuff when Ray uh, when he was in his human form, it's like wow, bro, and the way she sounds as she's Chucky. It's like, Jesus Christ, it's the spitting image. Literally the spitting mm. image. Yeah, I loved that show. That show was great, man. And they, I, I have to catch up on season two. But yeah, that's his daughter. And it's crazy how much she... It's as if she was practicing being Chucky all of her life. That's like, um, what's your name? Um, Ethan Hawke and Homer Thurman's kid. On yeah. Trinity. She's like a she's like literally a mix of both of them. Like it's she looks like her mother, but has the awkwardness of the father in a way. Yeah. yeah like she could tell because Ethan Hawke, he's got some pretty bad um like uh anxiety and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like really hard for him to function some days, he says, but uh you know, I'm sure the money helps. <laughs> but uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's definitely a a, a a twist of both of them because she looks like young Uma Thurman, and uh, she definitely's got some of her dad in her too. I'm really curious if they're ever going to do the Kill Bill with her being Beatrice's daughter, and then carrying on the legacy because it's basically should be. The, I mean, the story was set up. You have. Yeah, they say- you they have set that it daughter up. come and kill Beatrix. Beatrix is going to let her kill her because she promised that. And then yep. the two daughters go at it. And it's uh, kill whoever. Kill, I don't know, whatever you want to put in there. You know, I think that would be they a fly killed, movie. They killed that idea. It's too late now. They did. They did. They're they killed gonna, it. They're gonna pull that shit out twenty years later, like some of these other sequels, and everyone's gonna be like, "Ah, uh, it's been twenty years." I, Even if it's a great movie. Although yeah. that's not what the fuck is going on with this Top Gun Maverick shit, for real? Like that. I think that that movie, to be honest with you, is. A callback to old Hollywood summer movies, man, where it's, movies were exciting to go see. And yeah. I know times are changing, you know, 
with with uh with everything you know it reminds me of machete in that movie that says girls can do stuff now you know they can vote yeah. and everything <laughs> you know like i understand that like logically i understand you want to make movies that gives certain uh perspectives and stuff like that but i really think that people forget that with them changing the way they make movies and the things that they're trying to push forward, it's already has been doing yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, was just, I mean, I understand it's a nostalgia thing. I was just surprised at how big it like, came out. Like, Because to be honest with you, people are tired of, um, people are tired of, waiting to see if James Bond is going to be uh, Jane Bond. And their people are getting tired yeah, of, just, yeah. you know, they like, want fucking, they want to go back. You know, they want, they want what they were, what they had. They don't want what we're, they're trying to force feed everybody. And listen, I get like certain things don't matter if it's a white person or black person playing them. I, I get that, you know, I get that if you're doing a Black Panther movie, uh, the person is going to have to be black. You know, like it's in the name, <laughs> you know, and they live in an African nation, you know, so primarily it's going to be a black movie, so to speak. But that doesn't mean that it's a bad movie. It just means it's a movie based off of, you know. Well, speaking okay. of underused characters. Yeah. Uh, Ulysses Claw. I yes. think they could have done more with that character. They definitely could have. They killed them off too early. And I would have loved to see him in his pure energy form. I mean, they can still kind of maybe do that. Like but they, could, they, they still could have done the whole Killmonger surrenders him thing without killing him. Like, he could have captured him. Right. And then fucking... He oh stole God. like Siri's technology. That's how he got the fucking fake arm and shit. Right, right. It's yeah. They kind of screwed up with that too. Uh, they have a need to not bring these villains back, and it's kind of silly because that's the whole point of the comic books. I think. Yeah. Yes, we don't want to see five movies. Nobody of ever dies. All right, no consequences, no, no. Um, what did it used to be? It used to be, um, Bucky Barnes, Uncle Ben, and Robin. And right. two of them, two of them motherfuckers came back. I don't know how many times. <laughs> All right, all right, it's like enough, man, and not freaking enough already, man. Like, I, I don't know, I don't know, I just feel. I just feel like they they are trying to trying to get on to the next villain before they really flesh out the villain that you're like. Why don't we? Yeah, why don't we find out why? Uh, and the, I think one of the best villains they had the the Killmonger, he had one of the best like reasons, yeah, to go the route he did. And they just gonna make him go out like a punk, bro. Like, really? Yeah. Really, my guy? Like, you couldn't even give him a decent CGI fight because you had to do it all in the dark and really not make a clear difference on who the two were <laughs> in the fight scenes. But um, yeah, it's really it's really crazy, man. Like for me, Killmonger was definitely not used properly. Um, man, I almost feel like a lot of the recent MCU stuff has not been using uh, the characters properly, man. I Like for me with the, the She-Hulk thing, she kind of was like She-Hulk. But like to me, the jokes weren't landing. And the court cases really uh, I, didn't have any stakes to them. So it kind of is like, 
you're not really showing any action. You're not showing any real court, uh, stakes with the court. And the look to me, the jokes ain't landing. And it's like, what am I doing here, bro? This is not for me, I guess. I, rem- I remember when I talked to you before I watched the last two episodes. And mm-hmm. I was telling you that, you know, basically the show's the whole show's meta. It's trying to just call everything out. Yeah. And, and you were like, well, you were like, wait till you let, watch the last two episodes. Yeah. And, um, and you were like, your opinion's going to change in the show. Like, and that's exactly what happened. Once they showed that last episode, I was like, like, come on, man. Like, you know, fucking deflated the whole balloon that you blew up the whole fucking season. Like, I mean, I, I mean, you had people, to put you had to put the little ball cap on them. People were already having problems trying to get into the show, and right. you were like pandering to people to to just watch the show, and and they to even, the point where you turned on your own, you turned on your own audience uh, before the f- show even started, and, and you even claimed and, they even said they didn't know how to write courtroom scenes. So why are you writing a courtroom comedy? But Why? They turned on. They they created. They after they started getting like backlash, they retooled the show to be trolls against the people that were trolling them. Right. So the whole show was basically about, hey, fuck you, fuck these people. And we're, we're gonna the troll show. the trolls. And yeah. we. And then at the end, at the end, they're just like, you know, they they went from being like. um you know, I guess tongue in cheek with it to be right. like, no, really, to like, no, really, fuck you, people. <laughs> and they and they wanted this to be a family show, uh, and this is what one of the directors or writers was recently saying. They wanted this to be a family show, as Jen is exploring her sexuality. What the fuck are you talking about? How is that a family show then, when she's banging dudes for a plate of fries? You know what I mean? And listen, mm. that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. But don't tell me you're getting cat cold and you fear for your life when you're putting stuff up like I'm lean green and poured into these jeans. Mm. What are you talking about? You're you don't manhandling wanna... fucking... Right, you you're wanna... manhandling dudes. You don't want to be cat cold or looked at as a sexual object but make sexual references on a dating app that how you're ready to bang. What do you want? You cannot have it both ways. I'm you can't have it both ways, man. Can't be. You can't say, don't look at me like I'm something. When on the first date, you you bang for fries, French fries, man. I, I mean, I can go get some French fries, Chen. Well, yeah, she put them all on trial for being creeps. And then they had to go on trial to fucking help her. So, Understand she, that you should take accountability you know, for your actions, man. Like the only reason that you won this case is because you was using She Hulk, She Hulk, as a way to get to get to get hooked up, right? You, yeah. yeah, and that's again fine. Woman can you hear that, woman? You can do whatever you want with your body, okay? <laughs> but then don't complain when people look at you a certain way. You know, like. Oh man, I I only slept with ten dudes these last two weeks. What's the problem? Uh, for for me, nothing. For me, nothing. For you, I I don't know. I hope you don't get pregnant because then you, that's a lot of phone calls to have to make. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, and it's a lot of figuring out and detective work you got to do. And I don't know if you want to put yourself in that position or not. You know, you you show up as one of these guys to the paternity test site and you see six other guys and they're like, oh, who's here for Linda? And everyone raises their hand. It's going to be like, oh, <laughs> oh, hey, guys, I can we all going together. Uh, we were already there. <coughs> you know, I don't know. I just I liked the show. It looked good. 
but the writing and I and the and I don't want it to seem like the acting or the actors weren't trying their best. They were. The writing was what really set it yeah, off for me. And again, it's not so much about you know women trying to be on the top of their game. I, men want women at the top of their game. But you're like you were an assistant district attorney, uh, attorney. And you have no money. But you were working for the state and then you're working for a high class law firm. And like you said, uh, certain costs and stuff like the uniform, like the stretchy uniform that she had to get was probably a few grand or whatever. But like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I just feel like that show totally missed the point of it. And then want to get mad at the fans. Uh, Moon Knight was another one where oh. I liked, but I felt like... Well, see, I awesome. liked Moon Knight. I liked all of Moon Knight. I did, I, I liked, did. Yeah. But seeing Werewolf by Night, I was like, fuck! I wanted it yeah. to be that, too! They could have done something with that. Yeah, I think Moon Knight was definitely better than the She-Hulk um, show. Miss Marvel, I thought, was pretty decent. Uh, overall, and that was funny because I was thinking that was going to be trash over She Hulk. <laughs> what I was going to say about She Hulk too, you, you you said that it's supposed to be a legal comedy, yeah, but they didn't know they didn't know how to write a legal. Sh- Oh, <laughs> 